Good afternoon, everyone. Attempt number two at our Bearded Broker Live. We had some technical issues. Obviously, I'm not to blame for any of those technical issues. So we're going to do some some live Bearded Broker questions this week. Got some questions from LinkedIn and some Facebook pages. I think one from YouTube as well. So we've got Mark from Musselboro. We've got Ben from Oban. Ashley from, it doesn't say where she's from actually, and we've got GL42. So we've got a, a coded message in there somewhere perhaps. Right, my mission is to help first time buyers and next time buyers get onto the property ladder and do it with the most efficient way possible and just debunk some of these, you know, some of the stuff that goes on out there, people, you know, the questions that, that, that people ask that I often challenge why they're asking certain questions because they've heard something from their friend or from a relative. And my job is just really, I'm here to try and help. Uh, and if you've got any follow-up questions later on, then give us a shout. Right, so we're going to start off, so today is all about rates, uh, so Mark from Musselboro is asking, how long should I fix my mortgage for? A very popular question, Mark. Uh, so what Mark is asking there is, uh, so a fix is when you take your mortgage payments you take out a mortgage from a lender, whichever lender that, that, that you're taking your mortgage with, and you fix your mortgage typically for a set period of time. So let's say you take out a mortgage for 30 years. It won't be fixed for 30 years. It may be fixed for the first two years or three or maybe even five or maybe even longer. So Mark, it really depends on what the future holds for Mark and your, your family perhaps. So let's say you're going into a place for, it's a sort of short term couple of years because it's to do with your job or you know that, that, that sort of reason, then you would only fix your mortgage for as little as you can. In that example, you, you're gonna only be there for two years, you try and fix your mortgage for two years. And the reason being is typically when you go into a fixed rate, there is a penalty to come back out of that fixed rate if you break the contract within that two years for that example. So I always sit down with clients anywhere between 45 minutes and an hour to sit and go through the circumstances and what the future holds for you because sometimes it's better to have a longer term fixed rate and sometimes it's better to have a shorter term fixed rate. So it really depends on your own individual circumstances, Mark. Uh, so hopefully that helps. We've got Ben from Oban. Is it a good idea to make overpayments to my mortgage? Why not just go for a higher monthly payment in the first place? That's a great question, Ben. So, again, depending on the circumstances, Ben. I, I favour both, depending on, on what the situation is. If you can afford that higher monthly payment, and you're confident that you're going to continue to be able to afford that higher monthly payment, then I would encourage you to go with a higher monthly payment. And that is, depending on, on the type of person that you are, if you're very, very strict, and, and you know that you would make that overpayment each month, then you could go with the option of taking a longer term and just opting to pay an overpayment. Now, the problem is, as I've seen it for years and years and years, as people do it that way, and then I speak to them two years later or three years later, and I say, how did you get on with the overpayments? And the answer is quite often the same. Well, I didn't because this came up and that came up and something always came up that meant they couldn't make those overpayments. So, is it a good idea to make overpayments to my mortgage? The, the answer is absolutely yes. Why not just go for a higher monthly payment in the first place? 
Well, you could do that, but you're then tied into making that higher monthly payment every single month. Whereas if you opt for a longer term of mortgage and a lower monthly payment, then you have the ability to not pay that overpayment if something does come up. So, you know, you, you, you've got a car repair that's come up or something needs fixed in the house or that sort of thing. So I favour both, depending on the circumstances and depending on the, the type of person that you are. Uh, if you're the type of person that will just spend money on stuff, then maybe opting for the higher monthly payment will, will, will cause you to be more strict and not spend the money on stuff. Because at the end of the day, this is a massive debt that you're taking on. You want to be able to pay off of that debt as quickly as possible. Because although interest rates are low, you know that debt is taken over a long time. So the actual interest you pay back overall is, is huge amounts. Uh, and this is where lenders make their money. <clears throat> Hopefully that helps, Ben. Ashley, can I ask my lender to take out money from my property while on a fixed rate? Absolutely, Ashley. Yeah, you can do that. It's called a further advance. So if you have a mortgage and you've had it for typically more than six months, you can then go back to your lender and ask for a further advance. So they will treat it based on your affordability at that point and they'll still look at things like how much, how much, so it's called equity. So if you borrowed if you bought something for a hundred thousand pounds six months ago and you borrowed ninety five thousand against it and six months later you try and borrow more money against that house that's going to be really difficult because there's not enough equity they call it so that little difference between what you owe the bank and how much it's valued at that little nut that little gap in there is called equity now the bigger that gap gets the easier it is to borrow money against that gap if you like and, and by way of typically a further advance. So, actually, yes, and that also avoids you breaking the original mor mortgage contract that you're on, uh, and if you need to borrow extra money for home improvements or whatever, then, then you can. Usually not a problem, subject to affordability. Uh, we've got GL42, I have read that if you make overpayments, these can be used in the future as payments if I have difficulty to pay. Is this true and if I use this option, well, I, I still have missed payments recorded on my credit file. So GL42, that will depend on the specific lender and their mortgage contract. Some don't allow you to do that and there are some that do allow you to do that. So any overpayments in the future can be used uh, as payments. Uh, it's very, very rare that I've seen people doing that, to be honest. So if the lender is okay with it, and that is part of the contract that you signed with them in the first place, that will not cause a problem on your credit file. If that is not part of the agreement, they will class it as a missed payment, and that will cause a problem on your credit file. So hopefully that helps. I'm here every week to take all your questions. First time buyers, next time buyers, you're looking for a better deal on your mortgage, I would love to be able to help. So please fire any questions our way, stick them in the comments below and I'll see what I can do to get back to you as soon as possible and we'll bring them to the Facebook Live each week as well. Follow us on YouTube, follow us on LinkedIn, follow us on Facebook and we are keeping things up to date as much as possible. If you know any first time buyers that would look to buy a house anytime soon then please put them in touch, it would be great to, to have a chat with them. So it's Ross Stacey from the Stacey Group, we're trusted mortgage experts and I am the Bearded Broker. We'll speak to you soon. Thank you very much.